Ambassador Craig for uh, for this opportunity. I want to, I'll, I'll go uh, quickly present some of our results about the election. And I hope that uh, maybe Fritz can respond too, because we've been trying to get a response from, its, uh, response from the OAS uh, expert verification mission uh, for several weeks now. We haven't gotten had any luck. So uh, why don't we take the first uh, slide? Okay, first of all, I have to point out that it's unprecedented to change the outcome of an election without a full recount. When an election is messed up, as there was in Florida, for example, or it was uh, you know, Mexico in 2006, uh, you either uh, accept the results, you do a recount, and you possibly change it, uh, or you run the election again. It's, it's, I can't think of any examples. So it's very unprecedented, and it's even uh, more unusual for this pressure to come from an outside body or outside countries to actually change the result of the preliminary result of the election. Uh, as was talked about before, a sample size was taken. Roger mentioned that the sample size was too small. I don't think that's actually the problem. The problem is that there was no statistical inference used to go from the sample to the other 92% of tally sheets that uh, the uh, mission did not look at. Now, perhaps there was, uh, Fritz can maybe address this, but it was not in the report. So in other words, we don't have any idea from the report what the mission would have found if they had looked at the other 92%. Those of you who are familiar with statistics, normally you could use statistical inference to say something about that, but they didn't do that. They, they threw out 234 uh, tally sheets, which changed the result of the election, but they didn't say uh, anything about how their sample uh, affected the others. Now, the bigger problem, because they could have done that, uh, the bigger problem, and this is, I think addresses what Jim and others have uh, addressed about the fraud in the election, is that the fraud was not only on one side. Uh, there were uh, five times as many tally sheets as were thrown out. Over 1,300 were missing or quarantined. And those sheets, if you were to include those, uh, we found that those were in pro, uh, very pro Celestin areas. So if they committed that fraud, they committed it against themselves uh, because those would have shifted the election uh, clearly uh, in favor of Celestin. And that's why we concluded from our report, which by the way, looked at all 11,181 uh, tally sheets, and uh, we concluded that there was no way to, uh, to tell who won, and that the OES report did not contribute anything to, uh, to help us determine who had won uh, the first round of the election. Uh, and, of course, the others have pointed out that six out of the seven members from the U.S. were from the U.S., Canada, and France uh, of the expert verification mission. That is not just a matter of political correctness. These were countries that had a very clear position on what should happen, and they were also the ones that led the effort between 2000 and 2004 to overthrow the, uh, the uh, elected president of, of Haiti, uh, President Aristide, as Paul Farmer pointed out in his testimony uh, to Congress just a few months ago. Uh, can we go on? Now, uh, again, the other reason the election wasn't legitimate is we need more, and I think uh, Jim presented enough, really, but uh, there was only 22.8% uh, of votes counted, 27% uh, tried to vote. Uh, this is, you know, we look back at the last 60 years of history in the Americas, including any, and you couldn't find anything like this in a presidential election. So this is not really an election. Uh, and I already mentioned the missing uh, quarantine uh, talent sheet. By the way, we did also a statistical analysis on every, uh, for every voting group, which I can explain to you. It, it was nice the way it was set up. You could actually do that because voters were kind of randomly, alphabetically signed, assigned to voting groups. So you could see, uh, you could construct a 99% confidence interval and determine uh, which, uh, which vote totals for each of the three candidates fell outside of that. We found an additional 7.6% of tally sheets were irregular uh, by that statistical Text and those would catch most of the ones that you were uh, that Jim was talking about, where you added, you know, somebody added a, a digit uh, to make 100 more votes. That would show up, 
in the, in the, in the text. Um, so, go ahead, next one. Uh, this just shows you how small the vote was. So now, in the second round, you'll have two people competing for president who received uh, 6.4 and 4.5 percent, respectively, of the registered voters' support in the first uh, round of the election. Now, what happened? You had enormous pressure. The United States, France, Canada, all pressured uh, the authorities to accept the OAS recommendation. Uh, the OAS didn't uh, push it uh, so much. They uh, downplayed the, the findings. Susan Rice, in front of the UN, uh, threatened, uh, very implied, but very strong threat that Haiti would lose aid uh, if they uh, if they did not accept the change in election results. And uh, the U.S. government revoked the visas of the Inite uh, party leaders, uh, close to Preval and Celestin. And there was more pressure, actually. Amy Willens, who some of you may be familiar with, a journalist professor who's written a lot about Haiti, uh, wrote in the LA Times that according to many sources, including Preval himself, uh, that Preval was threatened with being flown out of the country, like uh, they did to Aristide in 2004, if he did not accept the election results. And Ricardo Seitenfus, uh, the OAS special representative uh, to Haiti, uh, made a similar uh, report before he was uh, then kind of dismissed from his post. Uh, the, uh, why, now the question is, why, you know, why is there pressure to do this? Well, uh, there's some history involved here. People, some of you are familiar with what I already mentioned, uh, where the United States government, with Canada and France and other allies, uh, cut off all aid, uh, all, all international aid to Haiti, uh, beginning in around 2000, all the way to 2004, and essentially uh, forced out the, the government. And, uh, flew our seat out of the country under circumstances that Bert Weitz, who was here earlier, described as a kidnapping. Um, the exclusion of Famille Lavalas is key. Jim mentioned that. Uh, I think the United States government was perhaps worried that this question could resurface if you had new elections, which is what uh, probably the majority of Haitians wanted. The 12 uh, candidates, of course, uh, put out a statement in favor of that. And uh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, well, I'll continue with that. So that I think was another worry. Uh, Bird also mentioned the WikiLeaks cables, showing that the United States has pressured Brazil and South Africa not only to keep RSD from returning to the country, uh, which of course is illegal not only under the Haitian Constitution but under international law, uh, but also uh, to keep them from influencing Haitian politics uh, from abroad. And, of course, with the return of Duvalier, and some of you may know more about this than I do, uh, but his head of security is Louis Jordel Chamblain, who is a uh, long-time U.S. intelligence asset. So we don't really know uh, who's involved in what here in terms of those circumstances. Now, uh, the thing is, there is a lot of uh, pushback. Uh, oh, yeah, the other thing to keep in mind is that Duval that Preval is committed to prosecuting Duvalier, and it is unlikely that the two comp uh, candidates now competing for president uh, would do that. And, and then you have the right here, uh, which I'm sorry, Roger's not here to represent that thing, but uh, he has written, of course, uh, in terms that describe this as a kind of a battle against left-wing government, linking Preval and Celestin to Chavez, and that kind of thing. So there's a whole part of the government here that just doesn't want uh, those people uh, in, in, uh, in any kind of power. And that also was backed up in the, in the WikiLeaks cables. Now, uh, if we continue, uh, first of all, there was a lot of pushback in the last three weeks. Some of it was already mentioned. The Congressional Black Caucus called for new elections. And it's important to understand that they were the force that forced uh, President Bill Clinton in between 1991 and 94 to actually bring the elected president uh, back to Haiti. So this is also, I think, from the point of view of, you know, we take the point of view of pro-democracy and also pro-national sovereignty. It's a minority view here in Washington, but it is a majority view of the rest of the world. And uh, so we think this is good. And in fact, other governments also, uh, 
the ones who resisted the United States support for the coup government in Honduras, uh, they, uh, they fought in the OAS to prevent the OAS resolution, which came out last week, from even endorsing the recommendations of the OAS Missions Report. If you read that resolution, it specifically does not endorse the OAS uh, Expert Verification Missions recommendation. That's because of the left of center governments in the OAS who refused to go along with that. Now notice, the United States got the support of the United Nations uh, on the record for changing the results of election. Could not get the support of the OAS. And in the Rio group, there was also a resolution that attempted to provide some report, uh, some support for the United States, Canada, and France position on the election. That was also blocked. And of course, you saw it took three weeks of intense pressure to force the government of Haiti to accept the change in their election results. So, on those grounds, I would argue that there is still, I think, some hope for Haiti to. Uh, eventually get a sovereign government and one that can, of course, uh, uh, do a much better job. I think, to me, a sovereign, functional, and legitimate government, and I emphasize legitimacy, because as we are now learning in Egypt once again, an illegitimate government is one that rules, well, they've ruled by violence for the past 30 years, and that is really the choice. If you don't have a legitimate government, you will have violence, and that's what you've had for most of history, except in the relatively few years, uh, the last uh, you know, decade or so, where you did have uh, some legitimately elected uh, governments. That is my conclusion, and that is why I think the United States is making another big mistake, just as it has in the past, in trying to impose illegitimate government on Haiti. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I think time has just about run out. We have one or two minutes. And I might see, I might see to Professor Shorter if you would like to respond. To uh, presentation. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not a political guy. Okay. Me neither. Okay. Well, that's not what you said. Uh, what, what, so I will not address those issues at all. Uh, I, I know a lot about statistics, uh, and I think that we, we, we ended up in the right place. We use the sample not to not to, to, to drive to drive the results, but to understand the situation and to team to get the teams to work together. There's a lot of individual issues here. I mean, sampling error can be calculated, but you have to think about non-sampling error, which in fact dominates in this situation. Even with even with with a, a sample, I think 300 is a pretty big sample. But a sample is uh, a size of 300, the non sampling error uh, will dominate over the sample. Uh, and so we had to make sure that we had that under control. Uh, and we did do that, I think. Uh, what, what, uh, one of the things that you said, I think, is our report. Uh, I take credit for or blame for it, although uh, only, only one of the appendices is contributed by me, uh, uh, is, is that we, we didn't explain ourselves. I mean, they, they can't, there was one of the members of the expert team was from Jamaica. Your characterizing was not complete. I said six out of seven. Six out of seven were from the U.S., France, and Canada. Yeah, well, I'm talking about now. was from Jamaica. I'm talking about now. We, and he's a really, he's, he's, he's the head of the election operation in Jamaica. He's a very, very good expert guy. Uh, uh, the participation rates are a serious issue in Haiti. Uh, but they're just, it's just, we didn't, we weren't asked to address that. We are asked to, it, who showed up, did they, were they treated fairly? And of course, they were not all treated fairly. And, and even though they were not treated fairly, did it, did it does mean you have to rerun an election? Now, I've been in Haiti uh, right after, right after. That. And the comment was made, we still have a lot of rubble on the streets, we for sure do. And we're holding up a huge amount of aid to go to Haiti because we can't get uh, the money there in a way that doesn't get it stolen. The fundamental problem in Haiti is the money doesn't get to the bottom line and get done the right way. And that really is the, is the issue. There's billions of dollars sitting in U.S. banks. Okay, thank you very much.